Praise be to the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome again to another segment of the Living Hope Ministry. We're extremely happy to be in the land of the living. God has demonstrated his love towards us so many times. And as a matter of fact, all the time, the love of God is being demonstrated and being meted out towards us. But there's a big question where that is concerned for a whole lot of people. People ask me, if, if God is so loving and if God is so, lo so kind, why and why and why? So I want to, and that, that question must be answered. It must not go unanswered. And I really appreciate and thank God for the facility of the media where we can reach so many people that may not be able to get these questions answer, answered. And by way of the media, we are able to meet them. So just tune in and see if you can get an answer. If maybe you may be one person asking this question. If God is so loving, one man asks me, if God is so loving, why ISIS is killing so much of people and he's doing nothing about it? And I respond, I said, by, listen, God already demonstrated his love towards us. He asks us to do something, and if we refuse to do it, we will perish. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. One person asked, told me recently, if God could only show them a sign that he loved them, they will serve him. I said, Look, God has already done that many, many years ago. He died on the cross. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, that same verse of scripture that he gave. It's because of his love he gave. And pe people are, are baffled with that question because of the chaos that we face in the world. But the chaos that we face is not because God does not love humanity. It is because humanity refused to respond to the love of God. That's the reason why we have these chaos. Men prefer to do what they are doing and still want God to shower them with this love, although he does it. But then what I want to speak about today is experiencing God's love. And that is what is crucial, why a whole lot of people cannot understand the love of God, right? They cannot experience the love of God. And because they are not in a position to experience God's love, they conclude that God is not loving or God do not love them or God do have any love. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today for this privilege and this opportunity to share your word with so many folks that are confused about your love. I pray, God, as your word be, be go, go, go today, God, you will reach them. You will bring some clarity to their question and answers in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. That will take us to Mark chapter 12. And verse 30 for the text, and John chapter 14 and verse 15. John chapter 14, verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Hallelujah. That is very striking right there because if we love God, there are some things that he asks us to do that we must keep, we must do. So right there, you can, stay, you can deal with that right there and realize that, hey, the problem we face today is because we refuse to obey God. Hallelujah. And Mark chapter 12 and verse 30 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So you see, God has already taken the initiative and demonstrated his love towards us. What we have been asked to do now is to love him back or to be obedient to him. Hallelujah. There are many verses in scripture that talk about the love of God. But perhaps the most profound statement is found in John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 and verse 16, which says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Hallelujah. I said some time ago, <laughs> something this is very troubling. Your eyebrows may raise when you hear this at first. I said some time ago that God don't have any love. Don't say anything as yet. Because you will not hear what I have to say. God don't have love. He is love. Hallelujah. His very being is love. So don't get me wrong when I say God don't have love. Don't go away and say the preacher said God don't have love. Say this too. God is love. Hallelujah. Make sure you said that. 
He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Take note of that. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that loveth, that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God. And God in him. He that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God because God is love. Anytime you speak of love, you are speaking of God. You could call him so if you want. He is love. So he that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God. But look around you today and see if you can find anybody that is dwelling in love. That's the reason why we find it so difficult to accept the fact that God loves us. Praise the Lord, because we are not seeing it in the lives of men. Hallelujah. We are not seeing it. And uh, many people call themselves Christian. We say we are Christian, but somehow we are battling. We are struggling to demonstrate the love of God. And hallelujah, this is what God has called us to do. Come up to the plate of love. Hallelujah. If you love me, keep my commandment. Hallelujah. Love is not one of God's functioning attributes as his omniscience, all-knowing, or omnipotent, all-powerful. Love is his very being. Hallelujah. The fact that God loves us is one of the fundamental truth about him. But for some people, that may seem as a, as a distant reality. That is what I start with. For some people, telling them that God loves them, they may be going through a hard time. They don't even want to hear that. Hallelujah. They don't even want to hear that. So for them, that's a distant reality. They have to, a whole lot of stuff have to happen to them before they could come to terms that God loves them. Hallelujah. But what they need is an experience, the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In spite of this, there is a difference in God loving us and we experiencing his love. Let me say that again. There is a big difference in God loving us. Yes, he loves us. Daily we can wake up and say God loves us. Hallelujah. All over the scripture from Genesis to Revelation, all you will see in the scripture is the love of God towards humanity. All through the ages, all God concern about humanity is his love being demonstrated to save man from their sin. Hallelujah. So there's a big difference in God loving us. And we really experiencing the love of God. Hallelujah. And that is what we need. That is what we need to experience the love of God. Experiencing God's love does not come automatically. So if God loves you, that doesn't mean because God loves you, you will experience it. Hallelujah. In a deep sense of the word I'm speaking. Hallelujah. By definition, love is a relation, a, 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 a relational, is relational, sorry. Love is relational. Amen. And most of us will know that. By definition, love is relational. You love somebody, they love you back, and you experience, each party experience one another love. Amen. We can love someone deeply, but if that love is not reciprocated, it only produces pain. Hallelujah. It's in the scripture. In the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Hallelujah. To 7. It reads, And God saw. Now he's speaking of God love us. But we need to experience his love. And if we are not obedient to his word, we will not experience the love of God and we will end up questioning the love of God and questioning the very source of love, hallelujah, which is God himself. Oh, glory, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5 to 7, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, 
and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. This is the point I want to make. It grieved God at his heart because he loved man. And what man concerned about is not loving God back, but is going his own sinful, wayward, destructive way. Continually have no time for God. Yes, God is loving, loving man. But man turn their back on God and go in their own way. Therefore, you cannot experience the love of God in full. You cannot experience God in a condition, the love of God in that condition. Verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. All because man refused to respond to the love of God. This is a decision that God has made. And we know the story it's about Noah building the ark. Hallelujah. God still in the midst of all of that. And he had the power he could do it. But yet still God decided, hey, I will still give man a chance. And there was a righteous man. I don't go into the story of Noah. That will be for some other time. And that will take my, my, my time and what I have to say to you today. But I wanted to make the point that God feel the brunt of it. Hallelujah. He said he repented. He's sorry that he had made man. Hallelujah. It is quite clear. The reason is quite clear. The people did not love God. And that was demonstrated in their wickedness and their sin. Hallelujah. Clear. If you look around today, you will see the way men behave. It is clear that men don't love God. But yet still they want to see the fullness of the love of God. Hey, if you want to experience the love of God, turn your heart to him. Live for him and you will experience his love. Hallelujah. On the other hand, to be loved by someone and not knowing it also means there is no experience of that person's love. Hallelujah. In order, in order to experience the love of God, we need to come to the place of knowing him. Hallelujah. In order for us to really experience the love of God, we must come to the place in our life of knowing God. Hallelujah. We must come to the place of knowing him. That is only possible by having a relationship with him. Glory to God. That is only possible by having a relationship with God. That is what the preachers are preaching about. Telling people to, hey, leave your sin. Turn away from your wicked ways. Turn away from your sin. Come this, come here. Come have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and you will experience his love. Hallelujah. If you experience the love of God, you, you, will, you want nothing else. You will not want anything else. The love of God is all that we need. Hallelujah. In him is the fullness of life. Oh, praise be to God. Jesus tells us to love our God with all our hearts, minds, soul, and strength. What that means is that in everything we do, everything our energy is engaged in, and every ambition we hold will in some way say, Lord, God, I love you. <laughs> Whatever we do will some way say, God, I love you. I love you. Our life must be designed again towards the love of God that it was meted out to us. We must respond to it by seeking to obey his commandment by living holy, living righteous. Oh, praise the Lord and shun the very appearance of evil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of God. The gospel, the gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 31 says, also, also said, love your neighbor as yourself. Mark chapter 12 and verse 31 says, love your neighbor as yourself. And that is because our relationship with others is intricately related to our relationship with God. 
That is important. I hear people say, I love God. God know my heart. God is in my heart. I have a relationship with God. But they, they, they don't have no relationship. They, they don't want to mingle and mix with people. You, for, for want of a better word, they don't love people. You don't want to be around people and don't want to mix with people. You don't love people. If you love people, you want to be around them all the time. All the time. They don't want to be around people. For, for some people, they're not going to church. They don't want to be around people. But they claim that they love God. Hey, our relationship with God connect with the relationship we have with people. If, if we picture the cross and envision the vertical as the relationship we have with God, it meets at the core and heart of the horizontal, which reaches outward to the relationship we have with others. Hallelujah. The relationship with God and with others cannot be separated. No. If you need, if you want to use the cross, picture, have a vision of the cross in your mind. The relationship with God and with others cannot be separated, and you will, else you will not get the cross. Hallelujah. One is God and one is people. God and people. And to get the cross, they have to go together. They must be together. They reach at the core, at the heart of the cross is where the love connect. So to demonstrate the love of God, we need to love people. We need to learn to love people. We don't have it naturally because of our sinful nature. But if we have the relationship, if we form the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, hey, the possibility exists that we will learn to love people and there we start to experience the love of God. We start to experience the love of God. The problem we have, we, we are not experiencing. Not experiencing the love of God doesn't mean that God doesn't love you, you know. We are not in a position to taste it. Hallelujah. To experience his love. That's a problem. People are not experiencing the love of God because it is not being meted out to them by others. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. But I beg you, you start it. Could start with you today. Could start with me. Me position myself, learn to love people, treat people nice, deal with everybody as one. And focus your attention on God, on the things of God, and you will experience the love of God in the fullness of the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is Lord, and he is love. Praise be to God. The relationship with God and with others cannot be separated. They go hand in hand. One is an expression of the other. When we call, when he calls us, he empowers us. We are all loved by God. But if we do not respond to his love, there can be no experience of his love. Of course, if we do not respond to the love of God, there can be no experience. Of his love. God expresses his love in many ways. Goodness, compassion, patience, forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Hallelujah. But, may, but, but maybe the most challenging of all is through obedience. The most challenging for us to really experience the love of God is through obedience. The, 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 the lack we have of obeying God. Hallelujah. Many of us can attest to the darkest times in our life are when we, when we stepped out of the will of God. Of course, sometimes it may be tough, but it can also be a turning point in our lives where our best lessons are learned. Hallelujah. In addition to us loving God, our obedience to him is a number one condition of experiencing his love. In addition to us loving God, our obedience to God and his word is the number one condition for us to experience his love. Hallelujah. Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 14 and verse 21. Let me just read that for you. John chapter 14 and verse 
21, it says, He that has my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. That is clear. If we keep the commandment of God and love God, God in turn will love us and manifest himself to us. Just we will experience the love of God when Jesus Christ manifests himself to us. We have a real hands-on experience with the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God that is possible. Thank God we don't have to de really depend upon people to love us because some people could make you feel you have no value, you have no worth, you are worse, you are nobody. But thanks be to God, Jesus loves us and we could love somebody and show them how it is done. Hallelujah. Because we have the love of Christ in our hearts. Pursue the love of Christ. Hallelujah. The love that God has for us becomes experiential in the context of our obedience to him. That is crucial. This is actually focusing on the last verse that I read for the text. If you love me, keep my commandments in John, hallelujah, chapter 12 and verse 14. If you love me, keep, John chapter 14 and verse 15, sorry. If you love me, keep my commandment. Amen. That may sound legalistic. Mm-hmm. But our obedience to God is saying, Lord, I want to live in a way that will please you and bring honor to you. And as we do that, as we say that by the way we live, by our obedience, as we say that, God says, I will show myself to you. That is experiential. When God showed himself to us, when we love God and God showed himself to us, we really do experience the love of God. In the parable, Jesus told of the prodigal son. The son was disobedient in dishonoring his father by asking for his share, for his share of the inheritance. In Jewish culture, this was greatly offensive as it implied that the son wished his father dead. But the father gave his son his share at a very high risk. God will take the same risk with us if we persist in, disobe in disobedience. He will let us go, but... Nothing changes in his attitude toward us. None of thing changes because his, he is love. That's the reason why I say God don't have love. He is love. Doesn't matter what we do, God will continue to love us. And some, some people take that and feel comfortable in their sin. That is not for you to feel comfortable in your sins. And say, so, well, hey, God loves me, so I don't need to do any, make any adjustment. No, he loves you, but he hates the sin. And when the day of judgment is come, when the day of the Lord of, is, is, is here, wheresoever sin dwell, if sin dwells in you, you will perish with the sin. Hallelujah. God never ceases to love us. And in our, and in tough love, he waits patiently for a chance of our heart to return to him. Or he wait patiently for a change of heart from us. Wherever we are, God will meet us. As I close, be reminded that the father in the parable paints a beautiful portrait of our heavenly father. He gets the robe, the ring, the sanders, and welcomes us back with open arms. Hallelujah. It is in a humble obedience to God that we greatly experience his love. Thank you, Father. 
We thank you today. We thank you for life. We thank you for health and for strength, your love, your mercy, your faithfulness towards us. I'm praying God that as this word is being said to us today, that we will make the necessary adjustment and seek to line up ourselves and to be obedient to your very word, that we can experience the fullness of the love of God. Hallelujah. Yes, we know you have demonstrated your love towards us, but somehow the people of this world have not yet experienced the love of God in full. I'm praying God that we come to the place of obeying the word of God where we can experience the love of God. God, hallelujah, and live more successful, live better life, and really form that unique relationship with you, God, that we could really change the lives of men on earth here. Father, we thank you in Jesus' precious name. God, richly bless you. Enjoy your weekend.